Did the Monocacy River influence Frederick's religious growth and success? Utilizing census records, burial records, historical county books, archives, old maps, and research documents, we found an answer to this question. Research revealed the Monocacy brought settlers together in forming a community where they were free to practice religion and traditions. However, it did not have a direct religious impact in the area. Rather, the Monocacy forced the collaboration of the religions to establish Frederick and its success. Native Americans have lived in the Monocacy River Valley area for thousands of years. Artifacts recovered from two archaeological sites, the Rosenstock Village and the Biggs Ford Village, indicate that the, the inhabitants were in the area between 1100 and the early 1600s. These natives hunted and fished, cultivated maize, beans, and squash, used coiled clay pots and bowls, stone pipes and turtle shells for bowls and cups. From this, we've concluded that various Algonquin-speaking tribes were at large in the area during this time. In the 1640s, when European explorers ventured west to the Monocacy River area, there were only small communities of Native Americans living at the time. In the late 1600s and the early 1700s, Shawnee bands traveled through Maryland from South Carolina, temporarily settling in the Monocacy River area. This tribe of Indians called the river and adjacent land Monocacy. During the mid-1700s, the Sioux migrated from North Carolina and Virginia to New York through Maryland. A small number of bands, including the Tutelo and Saponi, remained in Frederick County near the Monocacy River. For these Native Americans, the Monocacy River played a vital role in their day-to-day -day lives. For things such as transportation, food, places to farm, and plants and trees even provided for makeshift shelter. Fish from the river were eaten and used as natural fertilizer for crops. Dried tree saplings were used to make birch bark houses or wigwams. The honey locust tree provided a source of food. Wildlife such as beavers were used for clothing and food. Finally, rich deposits of rhyolite found in the area were used to make arrowheads, hoes, and other tools. In the early 19th century, the teachings of Handsome Lake regarding Jesus Christ became popular with the Seneca and other Tuscarora tribes. Handsome Lake, a Seneca warrior who had been greatly influenced by the Quakers who, in 1798, had sent men into the Seneca reservation to teach the natives how to farm in European ways. The Quakers' motives were simply to help their fellow men and they refused to take advantage of the Indians' trust by preaching against traditional Indian religious beliefs. Handsome Lake wanted to find a new approach for the traditional religion of his people. In 1807, he had a vision that defined the sins of which the Indians had to forego, including the belief in witchcraft, in love magic, in abortion, and in drunkenness. His teachings were based on his visions of sin and the ideas he learned from the Quakers. Between 1818 and 1845, a church based on the teachings of Handsome Lake evolved, which blended the traditional celebrations of the native tribes with Christian-style confessions of sin. His teachings spread throughout the Tuscarora na Nation, including those living in the Monocacy River area, and were eventually incorporated into their religion. Even though the Monocacy didn't house any native Indians, it played a huge role in passing bands of Indian lives by providing transportation, food, and resources. The major groups were the Anglicans, Catholics, and the Lutherans. They were ultimately under the leadership of the Lord Baltimore's, Cecil, and Charles Calvert, to name a few. Early on, these were tensions between the Anglicans and the Catholics. The Anglicans revolted against the Catholics, stripping Colonel Henry Darnell, Charles Calvert's right-hand man, from his title. The Anglicans used their church as a way to divide different areas of Maryland. The land was divided into 30 parishes. Each parish had six officials elected into the parish vestry, in which they supervised the parish. The parishes were different than how they are today, 
as the parishes were not the churches themselves, but a specific boundary, much like how we look at a county or voting districts. This meant that the Anglican church had a direct influence on the settling and managing of the Monocacy area. Henry Darnell, the Catholic who was defeated, was still quite powerful and had a lot of land which he sold to the Catholic landowners, most importantly being Arnold Libbers and Charles Carroll the Settler. The reason these two stand out above the rest is because of their reasons for owning such land. Instead of just owning land for profit, these two bought land to extend the Catholic settlement and for their friends and family. He even had churches built on this land to encourage them to practice the faith. The plots of land he owned included a 10,000 acre plot referred to as the Monocacy Manor and a 7,000 acre plot called Tasker's Choice, with the majority of the early settlers residing within Tasker's Choice. After large landowners invested into Frederick, they bought, brought pastors such as Mr. Schlater to create notoriety for Frederick Town as an established community rich in faith. Mr. Schlatter was Anglican in faith and even described the Monocacy as one of the purest in the whole country. As the Monocacy area developed, paths that were once used by Indians were turned into roads by the settlers. Although Frederick County was established as a political identity in 1748, it was originally seen as an area to be passed through while traveling. The Monocacy River generally flows south through the heart of Frederick meaning that the settlers had to cross the river in order to travel places. This led to a practice of referring to all roads that led to the Monocacy as the Monocacy Road. One very important road was the German Monocacy Road, the road crossed by many Germans that he were headed to Virginia. After surveying the land, some of the German immigrants liked the area and chose to stay there. They seemed to erect settlements in an almost uniform way, very similar to their culture. At the time, most of these first settlers were avidly practicing the Lutheran faith. These German immigrants had a very large influence on the religious culture of Frederick. Their settlement marked the significant beginning of the current day Evangelical Lutheran Church on 31 East Street in Frederick. The Lutheran Reverend John Casper Stillwever Jr. began preaching to families in 1733 eventually influenced the organization of the church on November 26, 1738. In 1762, the community had decided to come together and fully commit to the building of this new church. The influence of religion in the greater Frederick area is very prominent during this time. The community worked together in order to finally complete the building of this holy place of worship. But that is not the only time that this church has witnessed the struggle of the Frederick community. Frederick is highly noted for its long historical past, especially during the Civil War era. Catholicism. The first Lord Baltimore, who founded the colony of Maryland, first brought the Roman Catholic faith to this area in 1634 with the help from the Jesuits. The Central Catholic Church <laughs> in the Monoxy area, and still is St. John the Evangelist Roman Catholic Church. The church was founded in 1763, a few centuries after the British penal laws that upheld the establishment of the Church of England. These laws declared the Church of England as the sole acceptable religion. They imposed various civil penalties and disabilities upon dissenters. St. John was the first Catholic church in Frederick County, and during the time of its opening, it was the largest parish church in the United States. It was also the first Catholic church to be consecrated in the Archdiocese of Baltimore. Catholics helped spread their religion through missionaries and the schools. <laughs> Puritans. The Puritans were English Protestants in the 16th and 17th centuries who sought to purify the Church of England and Roman Catholic practices. They believed the Church of England had not been fully reformed and needed to become more Protestant. While they do not have any standing churches in Maryland today, Puritanism was an important religion that contributed to the history of Maryland. In 1649, 
Maryland Governor William Stone passed an act ensuring religious liberty and justice to all who believed in Jesus Christ. In 1654, however, the so-called Totalitarian Act was re repealed after Puritans seized control of the colony. This led to a brief civil war, the Protestant Revolution. That ended with Lord Baltimore losing control of proprietary rights over Maryland in March 1655. Methodists. The Methodist revival began in England with a group of men, including John Wellesley and his younger brother Charles, as a movement within the Church of England in the 18th century. The Methodist Church traditionally has nonconformists because it does not conform to the rules and authority of the established Church of England. Calvary United Methodist Church was the main early place of worship for the Methodists. Built in 1841, a lot was purchased on the north side of Church Street, and the dedication of a new Methodist church occurred on August 1, 1842. However, the congregation continued to grow so rapidly that in 1865, this building was torn down and replaced by a larger building. Another important Methodist church was Asbury United Methodist Church. Built in 1818, it is one of the oldest African-American churches in Frederick, Maryland. The church was originally known as Old Hill Church. It was constructed by a white congregation that permitted free blacks to worship there. In 1869, African-Americans came into full possession of the church, and by 1870, it was incorporated and renamed Asbury Methodist Episcopal Church. Because of its location, the Methodist would often use the Monoxy River for baptisms where they would completely submerge the followers into the river. Lutheranism. Lutheranism is one of the largest branches of Protestantism that identifies with the main teachings of Martin Luther, a 16th century German reformer. The Lutheran denomination differs from the other Christian sectors primarily in the belief that humans are saved from sins by God's grace alone and through faith alone. The main Lutheran church in Frederick was the Evangelical Lutheran Church. This church was the oldest Lutheran church in the United States. The Rev. John Casper Stover, Jr. began preaching to families in 1733 and affected the organization of the Lutheran Church in the Monocacy on November 26, 1738. The early congregation met at different locations near Thermont until the first home in Frederick, a log church, was constructed in 1746. The Lutherans would help spread their religion through Sunday schools and their care for soldiers in the Civil War. The outbreak of the Civil War left its mark on this church. The Evangelical Lutheran Church began the concept of a church Sunday school in 1812 to farther bring the community together. Episcopalian. The Church of England's earliest origin dates back to the Roman Catholic Church's influence in Europe during the second century. However, the church's official formation and identity are typically thought to have started during the Reformation in England of the 16th century. Although many people left England for religious freedom away from the churches of England. Episcopalians moved to America to establish churches based on the Church of England. Founded in 1742, all say it's Episcopalian church, is the oldest Episcopal church in Western Maryland. Parishers of All Saints have continually been the leaders in the community. Thomas Johnson, the first post-colonial governor of Maryland, and Francis Scott Key, a prominent attorney and author of the National Anthem, worshipped at All Saints. Episcopalian schools and churches were pressed into services as hospitals. These churches were used as temporary care for the soldiers until they could be moved into Frederick. The Quakers. Quakers, also called Friends with a capital F, are historically a Christian group whose formal name is the Religious Society of Friends, 
or Friends Church, both with capital F's. The Quakers seek religious truth in the inner experience and place great reliance on conscience as the basis of morality. They emphasize direct experience of God rather than ritual and ceremony. They believe that priests and rituals are unnecessary obstructions between the believer and God. Their first meeting place was built in 1736, called the Cold Spring Meeting House of the Monocacy. They would call worship events meetings for worship rather than services, and they would wait upon the spirit in total silence. The Quakers would set up friends, with a capital F, meeting schools to farther spread their religions. The main friend school in the Monocacy River Valley was established in 1784, and one of the oldest private Quaker schools in the United States. Modern religions. Today in modern religion, we see various faiths using the Monocacy River for sacraments and other traditions. There are a handful of faiths in Frederick that continue to use the river as a spot for resources for the churches, such as baptism. But that seems to be slim to none today. In Frederick, especially downtown, there are prominent churches that help represent the city. The Frederick Presbyterian Church served as safe havens during rough times in history, such as the Civil War, and participated in prayer services during the hard times in the history of the United States. Churches today also remain shelters for the homeless within the community and come together during tragedies. Others, like the Evangelical Reform United Church of Christ, influence educational institutions that remain intact today. Faith was a fundamental factor that helped the city of Frederick flourish, and we still witness the effects of that today. While walking downtown today, we continue to see churches that form communities of faith in Frederick. The churches of Frederick have contributed to su its success in the area through their acts of charity in the past and their presence now in the community. St. John the Evangelist Catholic Church was used as a hospital during the Civil War and during World War II, they used the church to collect canned goods to send overseas. The Frederick Presbyterian Church and the Evangelical Reformed United Church of Christ helped the community by influencing early educational institutions, including Frederick Boys High School, Frederick Girls High School, a church-sponsored preschool before they became mainstream, and the Maryland School of the Deaf. These parishes continue to influence the Maryland School for the Deaf. The Evangelical Lutheran Church also served as a Civil War hospital and is currently used as a safe haven for the homeless. In 1985, the congregation was awarded the Guidepost Magazine Award for having the most innovative program, Families Plus, that reaches out to the community. The Evangelical Lutheran Church was the first church in Frederick County. The Evangelical Reform United Church of Christ helped Frederick in many ways. They developed a library system, bought and furnished a group home for boys, and established a religious coalition for emergency human needs. The All Saints Episcopalian Church was also used as a Civil War field hospital and is still very active in serving the community today. To today, we see many schools such as St. John's Literary Institution, now known as St. John's Catholic Prep, St. John Regional Catholic School, Frederick Christian Academy, Visitation Academy, New Life Christian Academy, and the Banner School. These institutions have helped grow faith amongst the youth of Frederick and help grow communities through education built upon faith. Although the Monocacy isn't nearly as prominent in the religious, religious communities of Frederick today, the building block was the Monocacy River, bringing all denominations of faith to Frederick through the people who settled here and expanding the community. The Monocacy established itself as a central and reliable source. It grounded the churches to the city of Frederick and left such a strong mark that these churches are able to thrive and build a stronger community even today. What we do here is go back, 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 back.